So I guess Instagram is in the YouTube business. With IGTV, they've got these long form vertical videos that can now reach all of Instagram, which is a huge audience, and there hasn't really been a platform that could compete with YouTube like this before. There's a few things that are different and special about IGTV that you've kind of got to learn some new tricks to shoot vertical videos that really work on this platform. And I'm going to talk to you about the best ways to do this on your iPhone. So I've already been shooting Instagram stories like this for a while now, where I shoot them as kind of long format vlogs that are like one or two minutes long, and I cut them up into 15 second bits. I'm going to make this simple. All you need is an iPhone and a few free apps. But before we get started, I got to say this video is brought to you by Squarespace, where you need a domain, a website, or an online store make it with Squarespace. As of this recording, we're in very early days of IGTV, so what really works best for the platform we're gonna figure out in the long run, but right now I can tell you that what seems very likely is that lengths, even though we can have 60 minutes, videos shouldn't be 60 minutes long. The sweet spot on YouTube has always been between like five and 10 minutes. I think you wanna aim for more like two to three minutes. People have their thumb hovering over that swipe and they're ready to go to the next video. And the biggest difference in content between YouTube and IGTV is that it's gonna be a lot more personality driven. It's not gonna be so much about ranking well in keywords or being on suggested pages. People have to find you some other way because they like you, they like your photography, whatever, and then they start watching you. So an example on YouTube is I'll create an iPhone review and I know a lot of people are finding it by searching for iPhone review and they're not going to do that on IGTV. So I'm going to be posting a lot more vlog style stuff and that's also what I'll be talking to you guys about how to shoot. So let's get into that. I want to get some new glasses so I'm going to make that my little example story for you guys. First, you're gonna download Spark Camera from the App Store. It's free and what I like the most about it is that you can kind of shoot and edit at the same time so that you don't have to go back and do any work afterwards. You're sort of done as soon as you stop shooting. So we're just gonna start a new project, press and hold the screen to start recording, let go to stop, and there we go, we've got our first clip. Now let's make that a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna shoot myself talking and then do a whip pan to transition to where I'm going. So I'm gonna be like, all right guys, time for me to get some new glasses. All right, whip pan, right, I whip. And now I'm gonna do that over and over until I've got a really quick little vlog. All right, what do we have here? Cool, now we have a boring little story about shopping for glasses. Now we just need to tighten up the edit a little bit and make it watchable. All right, we more or less recorded what we want this to be, but it could definitely be better. So let's do some basic editing. Hit the play button and that kind of shows us our right, video. We can, we can watch it, I'm gonna get it right now. In the bottom right, I'm gonna hit edit. These are all the clips that are inside of it. Circles are the metaphor for clips. And if I just tap any of them, I can start editing it by moving these little handles. I'm gonna cut partway through the whip pan, then move to the next shot. Make sure it cuts in the middle of the movement. And I'm also keeping my clips relatively short. Um, if it's not an important clip, like nothing much is happening, I'm gonna keep it to like one and a half seconds or less maybe. Like, I don't know, okay. this, this clip of, of the door opening really is unimportant, so it's gonna be extremely short. And now I've got this parade of me trying on glasses. These are gonna go real fast. Okay, so I have an extra clip here. I don't actually need this one. I'm gonna delete it. And now once I've gone through and done some basic edits to all my clips, it kind of plays smoothly. It's something you can watch. I can swipe to the side to get some different filters on here. I like to use Tokyo at like 50% kind of light. Finally, critical step is you can add music by hitting that little note in the top left corner. Uh, right now, I only have copyrighted music and that's gonna cause problems here on YouTube, so I'm not gonna post it, but um, you can basically use anything that is actually downloaded to your phone, but you can't use streaming services. I hit export and that's it. Time for me to get some new glasses. All right, what do we have here? Since it's summer and crazy hot, I kind of already know that I'm looking for metal frames. I find in the summer that plastic frames uh, leave, you know, suntan lines, they're heavier, they warp when they get warm. Metal frames just kind of last longer in a hot summer day. All right, glasses have been ordered, and now I have about a week to wait for them to get done. This example is not ideal, it's a little too short. I could probably make something a little more involved and with a bit more of a story, but. Oh, and also make sure that your watermark is turned off inside of uh, Spark Camera. However you do it, and there's other video editing apps, another one that I could strongly recommend is 
Video Leap, which is also free to download and lets you do great vertical editing. I prefer it over iMovie. You can just kind of get a lot more done in it, but it's a more traditional editor. So you'd shoot first and then add them in later. But yeah, however you do it on your phone, I think it's best to do it quickly and on the spot and be able to post from where you are. That's the spirit of Instagram, I think. And of course there's people out there shooting amazing vertical videos on their DSLRs with shallow depth of field. And that is really great. I'll probably play with that a little bit, but I like to be able to post quickly and keep moving forward and reserve the big cameras for YouTube, at least for the time being. And there are a few more things to consider when shooting vertical videos. I got a couple more tips, but first I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using Squarespace for about 10 years now to host my portfolio, podcast, blog, various projects I've done over the years. It's always been on Squarespace. What I like about it is that I know it's always gonna be there. Like I actually had a podcast hosted on Libsyn years ago that when I stopped the podcast, I stopped paying for the hosting, so it disappeared. But of course I'm gonna keep my Squarespace portfolio because I love it and I've been using it for so long. And actually my portfolio pretty badly needs an update. I haven't put anything new on there for a while, but it's really easy to do. I just wanna redesign it first. So I'm gonna use Squarespace's professionally designed templates. They're fully responsive for mobile and my background is in web design and I love the way that they design these things. They work really well across all platforms. But since it's a fully integrated system, you don't have to worry about any of the technical details. So whether you need a website or you have a friend that does, you should go to squarespace.com slash Stallman where you're gonna get 10% off. So thanks again to Squarespace for the support and thanks to you guys for going to that URL. Everybody's talking about IGTV being a direct YouTube competitor, and in some ways it is, but mostly just in terms of people's time and attention. Like you only have time to watch so many videos a day and creators only have time to make so many videos a day. But they do fundamentally feel like different platforms and I think they're both gonna find space in our lives. For me, I think the difference would be that IGTV is a lot more immediate and I'm gonna shoot and edit it on my phone, whereas YouTube will stay on the big camera, a bit more high production. There's a few more things that'll make your IGTV videos better. One is you gotta think about vertical videos just show less. I mean, there's just as many pixels on the screen but the world is sort of oriented around us in a horizontal view. So when we go vertical, we're focusing in on a narrow band of it. So for the purposes of storytelling, you lose some of that context of the environment and where you are, and you kind of need to add extra shots. So that's why in my story, I was showing you where I'm going before I show you videos of myself talking. Also, it really helps if you can talk to the camera. I mean, I know we can all be kind of camera shy and just want to show our environment or just show ourselves not speaking, but it adds so much to the storytelling and the personality of the video, so it's really worth getting in front of the camera. But when you do, make sure that your camera, your phone, is pretty close to you, because if it's not, we're not gonna hear you. The most important thing about microphones isn't how expensive they are, it's how close it is to the subject, and if it's near you, it's gonna hear you a lot better. Also, don't be afraid of using filmmaking techniques like time-lapse and slow motion. All these third-party apps can create amazing effects, and you can just add them into your edit. For example, I'm walking somewhere, I love to use hyperlapse, because it both smooths out the motion and speeds up the pace. So final recommendation is iPhone accessories. This is the Moment wide-angle lens. I try not to carry too many other accessories with me. Like I don't use microphones or I've used the DJI gimbal and like they're, they're nice. They work really well, but I find the bulk's not really worth it. Uh, so this is the only thing I, I keep with me. I keep the case on it most of the time. It doesn't really change the image quality. It just lets you have a bit more variety to your shot.